everybody, my name is April and this is Thrifty Nerdy Mom. Welcome everyone who is new here and welcome back everyone that's been with us. So today's video is three Harry Potter wall decor signs that you can hang up all year long. Um, the first two are more where you can tell it's Harry Potter, but the last one is more low-key Harry Potter for those nerdy people out there that don't want to like necessarily show that they're nerdy unlike myself who's just nerdy all the time but yeah if you haven't already please like and subscribe join our family we have lots of DIYs coming out this year and we would love to have you so let's get into the DIYs so let's start off with our first DIY so you're going to need a beware sign or any longer sign I picked this one up from Dollar Tree and you're going to turn it over and put a base coat of white use some black paint and some sharpie to fill in the lines you draw right here I'm using the ruler to measure out where I'm going to write Here I'm just drawing the Deathly Hollow symbol onto the sign. I drew a triangle, made sure that each line was the same length, and then drew a circle using something round. After I draw the symbol, I start to work on my cursive lettering that will say always. Now I'll start drawing out or sketching out the bolder font that will say after all this time. I highly recommend sketching it out with a pencil first. That way if you make mistakes you can erase it. After you sketch out your lettering, I'm going to use a sharpie and fill in my pencil marks. I suggest using the cheaper sharpies because on poster board and on paint, it 
goes on to the paint better. Now I'm going to use some black paint that I picked up at Walmart for 50 cents to add bolder lines onto the Deathly House symbol and the always. And this is it when it is finished. Now on to the second DIY. You're going to need a cardboard letter. It could be any letter. I'm just using an E. A peach tan colored paint. A yellow paint. A red paint. And if you want to outline the scarf, black. Also, I am using these classes that are left over from Emma's party and gluing them on, but you could either paint a pair of glasses or use some other kind of glasses. First, I'm going to measure out where this scarf is going to be, and then measuring the lines for the striped scarf. Now I'm just going to paint the flesh part of Harry's face with a tan peach color. Now I'm going to work on the scarf. I'll first start with the yellow stripes. You'll do one stripe and then skip a stripe and then paint the next stripe yellow. Now to add the red, like before, you'll pick a stripe, skip a stripe, paint the next one. Now I'm just going to glue on the glasses. I break off the earpieces and then place it down onto the letter before gluing it down. You are going to want to use plenty of hot glue to make sure the glasses are secure. Now after the glasses are dry and secure, I'm going to use a brown sharpie and add his scar. You can also use paint too, 
but I could not find my round paint. And here is the letter E when finished. Now on to our third and last DIY. You are going to need Jingo blocks from the Dollar Tree and foam board that you can pick up from Walmart or Dollar Tree. You're going to need four for the smaller ends, so eight altogether, and then six for the longer ends, which would be 12 altogether. And here I am just lining them out before I glue them to make sure that's what I want to do. Then you're going to want to use a ruler to keep the blocks straight. That way they don't get all janky. I highly recommend gluing all the sides together before you put it all together, like you'll see in a second. I have all four sides, two fours and two six, and now I will attach them together. It's best to use a corner edge to make sure that it glues on straight. After the frame is all glued together, you will put it down onto the foam board and trace out the square that you will need. Well, not square, but rectangle. After cutting out the rectangle, you're going to want to glue the foam board onto the Jenga block frame. After that's all glued down and dried, I just sketch out my lettering. I sketched out it's not much but it's home and then Ron Weasley's name and I'm going to use black paint to fill in the lettering. Once again you can use Sharpie on this but I was filling the black paint that day. So with the straight letters, I'm using more of a thinner line, and then with home, I'm making more of a bolder line with the paint.
After the paint is dry, you're going to want to flip it over and add a little hanger using jute or ribbon or whatever you have on hand. You're going to add a little dollop of hot glue and then put down your string. I use the end of a paintbrush to push it down into the glue. And then I add hot glue onto the top to keep it secure. And this is the finished product hanging on my wall in the living room. So that was it. That was my three Harry Potter wall decor signs that I did. Two of them I had put up in Emma's Harry Potter birthday. Um, the one I, the last one, is just something I was Pinteresting. I looked up and I'm doing like a more home decor type um, DIYs this month. So when I saw that little quote, I thought it was great. It's like I said before, something low key that you can have up, but um, especially if you're not into like just straight up showing all your nerdy side, you can have it up just anywhere and it can be a little bit of Harry Potter without just absolutely screaming Harry Potter. But um, comment down below, let me know which one is your favorite. I really love the, he's right back here, the Harry Potter E. I have done several E's for Emma's birthdays. She's had like an emoji party and like a donut party and stuff like that. And I always do like a themed E. And so I did a Harry Potter E this year. And that could totally be something you do with any letter. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye.